All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Juan Carlos Lopez. I'm one of the admissions advisors for the University of California. Uh, we want to welcome you to UC Merced webinar. Uh, tonight's panel, tonight's panelists will be talking to you in a minute, and uh, we'll get started with this. First, I'm going to introduce you to Claudia. Claudia, she's going to go over some of the information for tonight's agenda and what's going to be covered tonight. And at the same time, as you have any any questions throughout the, the night, please do ask. We want to make sure that we answer any questions that you may have about our 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 series tonight. And then at the end of, of the series, we're going to uh, invite you to come and come back and see other series that we're going to be part of. Thank you very much, and let's get started. Hola, buenas tardes. Me llamo Claudia Torres y yo represento la Universidad de California Merced a través del sur de California, específicamente sirviendo el área de Los Ángeles y el condado de Orange. Estamos muy emocionados de tenerlos a todos aquí hoy y si tienen alguna pregunta, por favor, no duden en dejarla abajo en la sección de preguntas y respuestas. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Claudia Torres and I represent UC Merced throughout Southern California, more specifically serving the Los Angeles and Orange County area. We are very excited to have you all here today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down below in the Q&A section of our webinar. Um, next slide, please. So just starting here with our agenda for today, we will be starting with a warm welcome from Juan Villegas, and then we will move on with Alex Delgadillo, who will be going over some of the student resources available on our campus. We will then proceed with a bit more information about what learning at UC Merced is like before transitioning into our student panel and closing it off with some final remarks at the end. Um, and so I just wanna give a huge welcome to you all once again. We are so excited to have some wonderful panelists and guests here this afternoon. Um, once again, my name is Claudia and both Juan Carlos and I will be here as your moderators and presenters for today's event. We are welcomed by some wonderful special guests Alex Delgadillo, the Associate Director of Educational Equity and Access Programs. We also have Juan Villegas, our very own Associate Director of Admissions and our student panelists. Martin Arredondo, a political science major. Susan Guerrero, computer science and engineering major. And Jacqueline Osegueda, political science major. Again, congrats to everyone on your admission to UC Merced. We are very excited to have you all present today. And I would like to pass the floor over to our Director of Admissions, Juan Villegas. Thank you very much, Claudia. And uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Uh, I just want to say that I'm very excited, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure the rest of the team is excited as well, that you have been able to come and join us today. Uh, you know, UC Merced, uh, we have received the award of Excelencia en Educación and we have, you know, we're now in the top uh, public schools in the nation. But let me put it this way. Um, I just want to welcome you to this uh, webinar and welcome you to learn about UC Merced. Even though, you know, there's a word, what we care about is that we are able to serve you, serve your family as well. That's why I'm excited to see you uh, in this uh, uh, in this webinar that is part of a series. So on behalf of the Office of Admissions at UC Merced, I thank you and congratulate you, you know, because you're here not because you got something for free. You got here because of your efforts. So keep up the good work because it's you as a student and it's the family as well. So once again, congratulations. And on behalf of the University of California Office of Admissions, Please join, uh, join this webinar and come and visit the campus as well. We'll be more than happy to meet you up there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juan, for your words of wisdom and sharing so much valuable insight. Um, we would greatly appreciate having you here today, and I hope the audience is also able to resonate with what you've been able to share with us. Um, to add on to what my colleague has shared, um, I'll just go on to the next slide. Um, we want to share just a bit more information on some of the resources that we have to offer and what learning at UC Merced is like. From a demographic standpoint, our campus is a very tight-knit community. We have just a little over 9,000 total undergraduate and graduate students, which really allows you to connect with your peers, connect with your professors and your community on a level that is closer to that of a small private school. Additionally, just to break down the campus by school, our largest school within the University of California Merced is the School of Social Sciences, Humanities and Arts with 43% of our student population. 
29% of our students are in the School of Engineering, 25% of our students are in the School of Natural Sciences, and 4% are undeclared. So if you yourself apply to our campus as undeclared, you're definitely in good company and you have an array of options available for when you determine what your major will be. Now by ethnic breakdown, we are a pretty diverse campus with around 58% of our student population identifying as Chicano Latino, um, around 19% identifying as Asian, 8% identifying as white, 6% as international, 4% as African American or black, 3% as two or more races, and less than 1% as American Indian or Pacific Islander. And lastly, around 1% that declined to state. So as you can see, we do have a very diverse student population. And I think that's one of the most important elements of UC Merced. We are a very tight knit and diverse campus. We are also a Hispanic serving institution and we're on our way to becoming an Asian American, Native American, Pacific Islander serving institution as well. Now, if we can just go on to the next slide, just to go on a bit about the more um, demographics and statistics on our campus. I'm very excited to share that around 71% of our undergraduate students are first generation, which is an incredible accomplishment in and of itself. And so I want to remind any incoming first generation student in the audience, once again, that we have so, so many resources available for you on campus that we hope will support you in your academic and personal journeys during your time at UC Merced. And we will actually also be getting into those in just a bit. Now, at UC Merced, most of our students are from California. That's around 99% of our students, with slightly more students coming from Southern California than any other region. In terms of our retention rate, which is something that is super important for you all to keep in mind, around 86% of our first year students in fall of 2019 returned for fall of 2020, and almost 89% of our transfer population did the same. This is important because while it is crucial that you do make it into the university that you wish, it's just as important that you have the tools and the resources to actually be able to stay, be successful and graduate. And so I think that our numbers definitely show that that is possible at UC Merced. Now, for those who don't know where our beautiful campus is, we are located right between Modesto and Fresno, just left of Yosemite National Park. If you haven't had a chance to visit, I definitely recommend it. And we'll be going over um, campus tours towards the end of our webinar today. Now, as of 2020 to 2021, around 91% of our students received financial aid. So most of our students at UC Merced do qualify for some form of financial aid, which is amazing. And this actually also leads us to our next slide on um, the different top rankings for our university. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as you can see here, we are number one in the nation for the percentage of students who receive need-based aid. We are also number eight in the nation for performance of first-generation students and number one for student outcomes, which is absolutely amazing. And we are so incredibly grateful and humbled to have that recognition. We are one of the top 100 universities in the nation number 38 among public institutions as of 2022, number 17 in the nation for best undergraduate teaching among public universities, and number 86 among colleges and universities for Hispanics. And finally, we were number five for social mobility in 2021. And I believe that that number has actually gone up since then. And we are now number four in the nation for social mobility as of 2022. So what does that mean? Um, that means that our campus is here to support our students. We are here to help them go above and beyond and to move forward into the careers and graduate programs that they want. This number is based on our graduation rates, on our retention rates, and on our success in getting our low income or first generation students to that finish line. And so with that, I want to transition to my next slide on student support services and campus resources. And I do want to briefly go over some of the student support services that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and give you just a bit more detail. So our transfer returning and veteran program is tailored toward our non-traditional student population and it provides peer mentoring, academic support services, and the community of engagement that's meant to really help our students connect with one another and build those really important support systems. Our STEP program, for example, is designed to provide enhanced academic and co-curricular support services um, to excelling students who are first generation, who are low income, and students with disabilities. Our Fiat Lux program is invitation only and geared towards first year, first generation, low income students. And it's meant to just support them with that transition to the university and just to help them build a community of scholars, help enhance student development. And so under this program, students are assigned a living learning community during their first year. 
They're also signed a financial aid package of around 100,000 throughout their four years at the university. Um, and they're also sort of provided a dedicated support system of student mentors and counselors that are just really there to help all of you um, support all of you through your retention at the university. And so again, this is by invitation only. So if you have received a invitation via email, I highly, highly recommend that you take advantage of that resource. We also have our guardian scholars, which is tailored to our foster and homeless youth. And it essentially provides a network of academic and personal support services at UC Merced. Um, uh, and we also have our undocumented student services office, which provides services for professional career, personal and academic development, as well as financial aid resources and legal services. So these are for undocumented students themselves and for students who may have immediate family members that are undocumented. We also have PALS, which more so offers tutoring services aimed to help their students academically through peer assisted learning environments. We also have our success mentor program, and this program provides peer mentors um, support to help empower and facilitate your transition to UC Merced during your first year. Um, along with student support services, we also have a lot of campus resources. And so if you're interested in counseling or psychiatric services, individual or group counseling, like support groups or anything like that, our CAPS office is more than happy to help support your mental health and your well-being. We also have the CARE program. And so this program provides campus partners prevention, education, and trauma-informed care advocacy on issues of gender-based violence. On our campus, we also have our student health services. If you need medical attention or you just need to talk to a doctor or be referred off campus for whatever reason, you would reach out to your health center and find whatever care you need there. And then finally, we have our student accessibility services. And this office helps provide our students with disabilities with the educational tools and the resources that you need to be successful at the institution and ensure accessible learning environments. And so I know that this is a lot of information to process and just to retain. Um, but we really want to strive to empower our students, regardless of their, of their background, take advantage of the different resources we have to offer. We're, and if for whatever reason you ever forget anything, we're always here to refer you to these services as well. Um, they are here for you. They're built for you. So please don't ever forget that. And just going on to my next slide on career preparation, we also have our Center for Career and Professional Advancement, which is an amazing resource on this campus. I use Merced to take advantage of for support with anything from individualized coaching, career counseling, anything from job search assistance to interview prep, anything from resume and cover letter help, digital brand development, support exploring graduate or professional schools, and sometimes even trips to like businesses in the Silicon Valley, in LA and San Francisco for networking opportunities. So if you, for whatever reason, have any questions about the Center for Career and Professional Advancement, please do reach out. It is a very, very valuable resource that will definitely help you out during your time at the university and during your time after as well. Move on to the next slide. All right here, so now we're going to go on to our basic needs resources at UC Merced. Um, we provide a lot of food services through our basic needs resources office. We understand that basic needs has a direct impact on the mental, the emotional, and the physical health of our students, on their wellness, on their academic performance, on professional development. It can affect you in a lot of different ways. And so if for whatever reason you ever, ever need food assistance, we offer an array of different options like our Bobcat food pantry, where you can walk in and have access to groceries. We also have food distribution days where we have boxes of food available of different sorts for students to grab and take home. We have a community garden on our campus that is run by our students, and we always encourage you to take advantage of the fresh produce and pick some up whenever you can. Additionally, we have CalFresh assistance, so if you are wanting to apply to CalFresh and you're just not sure how to go about it, we have an office that focuses on supporting you throughout that application process. We also have our Crop Mobster program, which is a partnership within Merced. It's essentially a free online food and agricultural exchange and community engagement program. It's essentially a food exchange program, if you may. Um, finally, we have iCare, our meal donation program, and it essentially allows you on students on campus to donate any Excel like meal swipes to peers who have maybe run out of swipes or are running low for the dining hall. And of course, you can always find more information posted around campus or online. And you'll often see like these uh, flyers that we have up on the screen today. Just move on to the next slide. 
and we'll be going over different clubs and organizations on at UC Merced. I want to mention that we have a little over 200 clubs and orgs, um, but just to focus on in a bit that we want to highlight, um, just to give you an idea of life on campus. As a campus, we take a lot of pride in the different clubs and orgs that our university offers and all the clubs that our students have created and continue to create and actively engage in. We have, for example, a folklorico group on our campus. We have Central Americans for Empowerment, the UC Merced, our Chicano Latino Council, our Club de Español, our Hermanos Unidas and Hermanos Unidos, our Ingenieros Unidos. And so a lot of these clubs are created and run by our students themselves in the sense to just empower one another and increase the engagement in the community that they have. Again, this is just a glimpse of the clubs and orgs that our campus has to offer. But if for whatever reason you don't see something that catches your interest, you are more than welcome to start your own. And we are always so excited to see all of the ideas and all the new clubs that our students come up with while their time at uh, UC Merced. And just finally, one last thing I want to mention on our next slide, we have our STEM and agriculture research opportunity. So this is a really, really cool opportunity that I definitely advise that you all take advantage and at least just take a glance, quick glance at. Um, and we have available and it's available to transfer and first year students. It's a six week program over the summer. And so if you are someone who is by any chance interested in STEM or agricultural research, we definitely encourage you to go visit the website on the slide here and check it out. Our deadline for the application is May 1st. So you still have a bit of time to think it over. But I would definitely recommend applying and just getting it out of the way as, you, as soon as you can, especially if you already know that UC Merced is the school you will be attending in the fall. And so again, we have the deadline up on the screen. And I would just, this leads us to our next special guest, Alejandro Delgadillo, our Associate Director of Educational Equity and Access Programs. Welcome, and we're so excited to have you here. And so I will just go ahead and pass the mic over to Alex to share a bit about himself and his work at UC Merced. Thank you, Claudia. I greatly appreciate the information you shared. I may be somewhat redundant as I'll be sharing very similar information in this part of the presentation today. Uh, as was mentioned, my name is Alejandro Delgadillo, Delgadillo no Bolillo, okay? I am the Associate Director for Educational Equity and Access Programs. So what that entails is I oversee a variety of different programs that focuses on the retention and success of prominently first-generation low-income students here at UC Merced. Currently in our variety of programs that I oversee, there are over 1,700 scholars within our programs. Um, but I also want to welcome you to this opportunity as Claudia also want to congratulate you on your admission to the most distinguished university system in the world and the, the fastest rising university within the UC system and across the United States and that's UC Merced. So as I, we begin the presentation, um, thank you. I'm gonna talk about our, our student success here at the university. Not only do I oversee a variety of programs and services, but I also am an advisor to Hermanos Unidos. I am also the advisor to OD5, a multicultural fraternity here at the university. I also am an a, advisor to our under, uh, undocumented student organization here at the university, as well as a couple other organizations as our students are highly involved. You'll find that first generation students are more prominently, more conscious and aware of wanting to give back in addition to pursuing their education. And for our first generation students here at the university, first and foremost, their priority is to make their families proud. Number two is to get quality education and hopefully get a career that they can financially assist their families as well, and also give back to their respective communities. So since 2005, when the university welcomed its first initial class of over 800 students, it has become the newest research and teaching university of the new millennium. In that short time, UC Merced has become one of the top universities in the United States, a leader in technology, innovation, pre-health sciences, and more. UC Merced has graduated a long and distinguished list of graduates who have become leaders and contributors in their respective professions and in their communities. The university serves a diverse and vibrant student community in which 58% of our students are of Latin descent, 75% our first generation and over 60% come from families in which English is not the most prominent language, meaning that over 60% of our students come from immigrant families. Many students identify their family as their major source of motivation to succeed in college. With the majority of our students being the first in their family to attend college, 
They are assisted by a variety of programs and services to help them navigate through the university that foster academic and personal success. Such programs as Fiat Lux, which supports first-generation low-income students academically, financially, and personally during their four years at the university. The Success Mentor Program, which provides a mentor for students during their first year at the university as they make their transition from high school to college. The STEP Program, to assist first and second year students as they explore and prepare for career opportunities after their graduation from the university. Services for Undocumented Students serves over 600 students here at UC Merced. That means one out of 19 students here at UC Merced are undocumented. And this also includes 15 students at the master's and PhD level as well. With over 600 undocumented students, that makes UC Merced the fourth largest population in the UC system at the smallest of the UC, uh, the smallest campus within the UC system. Um, but we also encourage students of mixed status uh, to also be involved and take advantage of the various services that the uh, Office of Services for Undocumented Students also offers. As mixed status students can also be involved and receive the services, including free legal services to assist their immediate family as well. Um, uh, but this is a brief list of programs, but I also want to include two other programs. And as mentioned by Claudia, is our Guardian Scholars Program, which is a year-round program to support students who are former foster youth or homeless youth. Also, our newest program, which is Underground Scholars Initiative, to serve and support those students who may have been formerly incarcerated, students who may, may have been incarcerated as minors through the California Youth Authority System, or students who come from families that have been impacted by incarceration. And that is our newest program that we have started this year to serve that population. In addition, there are services for students who transfer to UC Merced from a community college from another four-year university through the Transfer Returning and Veteran Program, or TRV, which provides services unique to transfer students. I encourage students to explore and learn more about additional programs that will assist them during their tenure here at UC Merced, such as the ones I've just mentioned. Nearly 90% of our students will return for their second year at the university. A lot is attributed to the academic advising that students receive here during their first year through the Bobcat Advising Center that assists students in preparing to meet the academic requirements for both their major for graduation. Each student is assigned an advisor during the first year to better and help them and guide them through their, their first uh, academic year here at the university as they fulfill and begin the lower division pre-major requirements for their major. Often a major concern for families is the cost of an education. UC Merced is ranked in the number one public university in the United States for financial aid. The Blue and Gold program assists many students in making college accessible. UC Merced also excels when it comes to helping students graduate at rates higher than expected. The university's graduation rate is a full 10% points above the national predicted rates, a differential that ranks 11th in the nation. Currently 48% of our graduates every spring are graduating in STEM related majors, which often makes us one of the top, if not the top University of California campus within the UC system. After the first year, students will be advised by their academic advisors within their academic school. It could be the School of Engineering, the School of Natural Sciences, or the School of Social Sciences, Humanities, and Arts. With the assistance of their academic advisors, students will focus on their respective field of study and preparing for their career options after graduation. The relationship between student and advisor is one of the most important during a student's time in college. And that is why students should get to know their advisor early during their time here at the university. To assist, assist students in their academic success, the university provides a series of tutorial programs to help students success, succeed in the classroom and out of the classroom. Such programs, for example, the English Language Institute to help those students who maybe English is not their first language as they transition to the university, especially during their English or writing courses. The Excel program, which is intended to be an academic coaching program for students within the natural sciences. Library services to assist our students in their uh, pursuit of research and also formatting their research papers or proposals here at the university. The peer-led undergraduate studies program, which formerly was known as PALS, but is now called the PLUS Center, assists students in a variety of different uh, subjects, introductory courses, and, to, and providing uh, undergraduate students as tutors to help them through their first year, as well as second year as well. The STEM Tutoring Hub is a part of our STEM Resource Center, which provides additional tutoring in specific areas, such as 
physics, chemistry, biology, and um, engineering courses. And then there's also the university center, the, I'm sorry, the university writing center to assist our students who need some extra assistance um, or tutoring help in regards to their writing or um, core writing courses that they have to complete. As I mentioned before, relationships are important for students during their time in college. One very important one is the relationship between student and professor. Our faculty are leaders in their respective fields, leading many of the university's innovative research that contribute not just to California, but to the world. These distinguished professors do not just serve as experts in their fields, but also as educators and mentors for many students. Often students may be a bit shy in initiating a conversation, with a professor, but let me assure you that there are no greater advocates for, our, for a student than a professor or faculty who sees greatness in each student. I encourage students to introduce themselves to their professor, attend a professor's office hours, ask questions and more. Professors at UC Merced like Mario Cifuentes, Zulema Valdez, Rudy Ortiz, Ariel Escobar, Tanya Gulash Bosa, Camila Alvarez, Paul Almeida, Marcos Garcia Ojeda, and more will be here to assist you as you matriculate here at the university, both in the classroom and out of the classroom through internships, research opportunities, and guide you through other aspirations that you will have post-graduation. My own success in college can be attributed to one Chicano professor who became a mentor for me and contributed to me becoming the professional I am today. And I am forever in his debt for the time he shared with me for his patience and guiding a lost and lost and believe me, bewildered young man, one of the most admirable qualities of our students at UC Merced is their desire to contribute to their communities. Through the Margo Souza Leadership Center, many students are able to be connected to programs and services that make a difference in the Merced community. From visiting elementary school children and introducing them to the idea that they too can attend a university like UC Merced, providing tutoring services at various schools and more. This is a reflection of the values that many of our students have learned at home from their parents, their families, and their community. Many students come to college not just to obtain a college degree, but to prepare themselves for a, to make a difference in the world. Our students understand the responsibility that comes with attaining a college degree, that the responsibility is how they will make a difference in another person's life because of their education. There are over 200 student organizations, as Claudia mentioned, in which a student can be involved here at UC Merced. Some social like Hermanos Unidos and Hermanas Unidas, some performance like Ballet Folklorico, some cultural at Club de Español, some professional like Ingenieros Unidos. Not only do these organizations provide a social network, but also foster leadership development, community service opportunities, and professional development. As a student, many such organizations contribute to my own personal growth as, as I not only grew personally, but I also found comfort in being with a group of students that often felt more like family. UC Merced is a part of the world-renowned university system of the University of California. A student attend any of the nine University of California campuses joins an elite fraternity of scholars known for innovation, creativity, and social justice and equity. As a University of California alumnus, I take a great deal of pride in being a graduate from the most distinguished university system in the world. But more importantly, I still call I can still can see the pride in my parents and grandparents' eyes as I graduated from college. I look forward to the day that you and your family share the same experience. I encourage you to participate in the Latinx commencement in which our, our graduates will walk, walk hand, arm in arm with their parents or family members. For on that day, it is indeed a family event. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share with you this moment as you begin the next step in your educational journey. Thank you. And here's my contact information. Feel free to contact me if you have any whatsoever about any of the programs that I've mentioned, any opportunities that we can assist you with and connect you with as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex, for sharing such valuable insight. We greatly appreciate having you here with us today. And I hope the audience able to resonate with and just take advantage of all the important information and the resources that you shared with us because as my colleagues have mentioned it is really really important that you all know that you have a community of people at UC Merced that truly care about your well-being and your success at this university. We are always here to support you in every way that we possibly can and ensure that you have the tools and the resources necessary 
to be successful not only on our campus, but beyond our campus as well, in your personal and your professional and your academic endeavors and goals. Once again, thank you, Alex. Um, now this leads us to our student panel. So I will go ahead and now invite Martin to introduce himself and just share a bit about his time at UC Merced. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Martin Arredondo. I'm from Silmar. It's a small town in the Los Angeles County. I'm a fourth year political science major. And a little bit about why I chose UC Merced. For me, it was really the, the diversity of the campus that I really liked. Um, being that I grew up in a Mexican uh, household, I think culture is a big part of who I am. And seeing that here at UC Merced, the demographic uh, for Hispanic students was high, it really meant a lot to me. And then when I visited, um, I fell in love from the first time I stepped on campus, to be honest. It's, an, it's new. It's like all the buildings are very colorful, which is what I really liked as well. Um, but again, just that um, diversity aspect aspect was really important to me. Um, and it continues to, I think, you know, push boundaries, specifically with the addition of our new chancellor, Juan Munoz. To me, it's like, it's just really powerful to see, you know, someone that came from circumstances like me, being at one of the top positions of the university as a staff member, is just great. And again, it's why I chose UC Merced and why if I had the option, I would choose it again. Um, in terms of some of my campus involvement, I'm part of the SSA club. It stands for the Sikh Student Association. Uh, Sikhi is a religion commonly found in India. Uh, it kind of speaks to the culture here at UC Merced. I'm not Indian, nor am I a Sikh, uh, but here on campus, you know, clubs are open to just about anyone and everyone, regardless of ethnic background. Um, you're welcomed anywhere. I'm also part of the boxing club because I, I like to stay active and Boxing is one of my passions, as well as the Super Smash Club, because I, I like to play a lot of video games. Um, again, just speaking to the, the diversity we have here on campus regarding our clubs, if you have an interest, chances are there's a club for it. Um, and in terms of, you know, what my plans are after UC Merced, being that I am graduating this semester, um, I really do want to work within uh, student affairs. I have a, a really big passion for working with students, you know, from underrepresented areas and I really want to help propel them to uh, to a four-year university ideally so I would uh, want to work at the high school or the collegiate level Hola, buenas tardes a todos. my name is Susan I'm a UC Merced student I'm a third year um, studying computer science and engineering um, I'm from San Diego California from the South Bay and um, yeah, um, I'm a first generation Latina in STEM and I chose UC Merced because like Martin said, I had a lot of those same feelings. I was seeking a, a university because a, this was going to be my new home for the next couple of years. So I really this decision was really important to me. Um, and the more I learned about the university, um, the more I saw the growth and the pioneer university that it is, it's really inclusive. And um, as soon as I visited the campus, I saw the sense of community and I knew that this was the right place for me. Um, coming from the South Bay of San Diego is a primarily Hispanic community. And I'm not gonna lie, like I was a little scared, um, you know, going to college as a first generation student was really scary. And um, seeing a community that I really um, gravitated towards um, was something really special. So I ultimately um, came to UC Merced. Um, with campus involvement, I am involved in the STEP Scholars Program, which previously mentioned this is a program um, to support first generation students. And although I'm not a first year or second year student anymore, I'm still in the program because the support that's offered, it's something that's really helped me throughout my experience. And just having that community being so far away from home is something that I really appreciate. appreciate. Um, I'm also part of the engineering service learning team here on campus, which is a great um, learn, um, learning opportunity. You get to be part of a, an engineering project that, um, that you give back to the community here in the Central Valley. And to me, having this opportunity was something 
really important to me because I was able to apply my skills in engineering and give back and learn more about my community here in the Central Valley now. And the cool thing about engineering service learning is that it's not only open to engineering majors, so any um, student in any major can join and be part of this great organization. Um, and my plans for after UC Merced, um, I'm really interested in full stack web development, more towards the front end and the design aspect of it. And I really want to um, use what I learned and in the future, give back to my community in the Central Valley, as well as I'm back in the South Bay of San Diego, and hopefully take it across borders to bring technology to underrepresented communities and you know help us further our education at the higher level. So thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Osegueda. Um, I am a third year transfer student. Um, my major at the, at the moment is political science with a, uh, with a minor in uh, the Spanish language. Uh, why I chose UC Merced is because of first and foremost, I wanted to be part of a growing community. And uh, clearly uh, UC Merced was the right option for me. And that's what I feel like it it brings. And also, it's it also, like Susan mentioned, it's a sense of community and diversity. Um, I'm in a I'm in a university where there's a lot of Latinos and Hispanos and um, a lot of different um, minorities, which you don't see at a lot of like bigger universities at a at this big of a level. Um, it's also a growing institution, like I mentioned, and um, I wanted to be part of that. In, in the Central Valley, we don't see there's not many universities. Uh, as in like the northern part of California or the southern part and um, UC Merced is growing community and I wanted to be part of that. Um, I've only been at UC Merced for a very short time like I did mention I am a transfer student. Um, I did go to Modesto Junior College and then I transferred here uh, shortly after uh, after two years and um, thus far I'm, I'm enjoying it very much and I'm very grateful for the opportunities I've been given. Um, the time I've been here, even though it's been short, but it's been great. Um, my campus involvement um, at the moment, I did recently join um, uh, the pre-law society at UC Merced. So um, it connects you with, um, with uh, current attorneys and lawyers and uh, you talk about anything regard, um, related to law and anything like that. Um, I'm also part of Voters of Tomorrow, which is a Gen Z run organization. Um, that's an outside involvement. Uh, we also we focus on Gen Z voters and try to get as many voters as we can, um, especially with the upcoming elections. It's really important and the emphasis to vote is very important because your voice should be heard. Um, your the vote matters a lot, uh, whether you're not able to vote and you know the vote speaks for even people that that are not allowed to vote or are not able to vote. And I'm I'm also um, in political campaign campaigns, uh, I do canvassing and volunteering. Currently, um, I'm volunteering and doing an internship with a state senator um, in Southern California that is running for re-election, and that's very exciting to me. Um, the thrill of like campaign season, even though um, some people, you know, avoid politics at all costs, but um, when you're enjoying it and you're, you're into politics, it's very enjoyable and. Seeing the process of it is very um, interesting and um, a very nice learning experience. And um, my plans after UC Merced uh, is to attend law school. So once I'm done with my uh, bachelor's degree in political science, I hope to um, apply to law school and uh, hopefully become a, a, a lawyer, um, anything from um, in like big law or possibly in immigration law. So. But yeah, that's me. All right, welcome everyone. We're just gonna go over our student panel and just some Q and A with our uh, Alejandro de la Vio and Jacqueline Martin and Susan for today. Um, so just going over some quick questions. If you guys could all expand on what you felt really brought your attention to UC Merced in terms of the community, how did you find your community at UC Merced? Yeah, um, I can take this one. So for me, um, like I mentioned before, um, you know, I really, when I made my decision to come here it was something really important and personal to me. 
um, just because I feel so connected to the community that I saw when I came to campus. Um, and that once I did get to campus, um, I, I started my studies here at the university. I really seeked out the programs such as like the STEP Scholars Program and different engineering organizations on campus to kind of blend in my culture and my passions and on my area of study. So I did dive into a lot of different organizations on campus, which is um, SHIP, so the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. And they have um, like a conference every year and they bring a lot of um, industry leaders. And it's really nice because you get to network with people who are also Hispanic and engineers. And they also have um, conferences dedicated for Latinas in STEM, it's called SHIPTINAS. And it's really nice because you get to meet people, other students from other universities and bring your experiences together. So that's the way I found um, my community here on campus. That is a great answer. Now, another question for a lot of you, um, think about the community at Merced. What is the biggest challenges that you found coming to the campus? Um, I can answer this one. So one challenge that I found personally as a transfer student um, was the sense of, I did have a, uh, I felt like I didn't belong here at first because um, I am a first generation as many of uh, Hispanos and Latinos are. Um, you feel this sense of like uh, that you don't belong because it's such a big institution. You have the, all these opportunities and you're not accustomed to it or you're not, you didn't grow up with these opportunities. Um, I personally didn't. And uh, it was really easy to find a community here at UC Merced because there are a lot of people um, like in my position that are first gen, um, first time at university and even transfers as well. Anybody else want to answer that question? Yeah, so I think um, in terms of what I struggled with the most here at UC Merced or what I found the most difficult, I think didn't have much to do with the campus, more so with myself. I think in Hispanic culture, especially as a male, um, asking for help is kind of seen as taboo. You know, you're kind of taught to, um, you know, take everything on your own and figure out a way, which is how I was raised. Um, and coming here, you know, struggling at first with some of my classes, trying to get used to, you know, being far from home in an area that I have never been in before. Um, I did struggle at first and it was kind of that battle with myself um, to kind of decolonize that concept that asking for help is bad. And it's something that I would advise everyone um, to kind of remove that stigma. I think this university offers you know, like they were mentioning in the presentation, you know, just a variety of resources for students and they're there for a reason. And I really think that our students should um, take advantage. And it's something that when I finally learned for myself, I saw it pay like dividends within my academics. Um, I went from like, I think a C minus in my writing class, attending the writing center for every paper that I have. And I ended up with an A plus. And it really just goes to show that, um, the opportunities and the resources that UC Merced offers are there to be used and they're almost like waiting for you to use them and I think it really helped. Awesome that is a great answer oh by the way how do you participate in the ambassador program at UCM? So I think similar to a lot of university jobs we do have an app called Handshake where uh, postings for jobs like the you know the student ambassador position um are on and you would apply like you would a normal job you you know submit your resume and your cover letter and you know attack the the job process as you would any normal job and that goes uh similarly for majority of the on-campus uh, positions that is great now, another question for any of you who want to answer this, uh, what is life like uh, living on campus or off campus if it applies to you? Yeah, um, I can answer this one. So my freshman year, I did have the opportunity to live on campus and I was actually um, part of a living learning community. I was part of a living learning community that's more targeted to computer science majors. So um, just my freshman year coming here, it could be really scary because I didn't know anyone. 
And being part of a living learning community was really awesome because I got to meet other people in similar fields as me. And, you know, I was seeing these people like in my classes and I was able to make friendships and connections um, as early as my freshman year. So that, that was really valuable experience. And um, now I'm living off campus and it's something that's very, um, you know, I really like it because I can have um, that um, I can have like my personal space here also. And, you know, I'm still dorming like with my friends I made since freshman year, which is um, really cool. So you can like tell how um, valuable connections you can make. Um, and a really awesome thing about UC Merced is that we do have a bus system specifically for us, the students who, um, you know, they have bus stops from all over town and they always take you back to campus. So it's a really safe way to travel and it's already included um, um, with your, you just swipe your account card and you're easily be taken to campus, which is really nice. Awesome. And all of you who are busy with, with your daily lives, how do, you, how do you manage how to balance your academics with your with the personal life and the activities that you do on campus? How do you manage that and do you seek out help when you need that help? I think it has to do a lot with communication mm -hmm. and time management. I personally use um, a calendar that way I can track uh, what I have to do and what I have to prioritize. For example, if I have um, a job that I have to, if I have to do it, be at a job, which is a student, I'm a student ambassador. If I have to do something for a job, then I would do that, but also that be on top of your uh, assignments and everything. So that's a priority. So job and prior, uh, my job and my uh, schoolwork is also a priority, but there's also time, you need to find time to um, have time for yourself because uh, like a job and school can be a bit um, overwhelming at times. But, um, you know, find time for yourself. Um, Self-care is very important, especially in college. So um, that's something to take into consideration. Great. What advice any of you would you give to new students? Uh, I think some of the things that um, I guess if I could, you know, go back and tell myself, I think I did touch upon it is ask for help. Uh, whether that's in your classes, whether that's your friends. The community here at UC Merced is, you know, one of the most friendliest I've ever been able to experience from the staff to the students. Um, and don't be afraid to, you know, make connections with your professors. You know, if you aspire to, you know, pursue a, any kind of professional endeavor, whether that's going to like med school, law school, or maybe applying to any sort of position outside of um, once you graduate, you are going to need letters of rec and who better to write them than your professors and i know professors kind of sound scary but you know being able to get to know someone on a more personal level they're human too and they're honestly really really friendly and it's one of the special things about uc merced being that we are a small campus you do have that luxury to get to know your professor on a more personal level with our smaller class sizes which is something that Again, it's also one of my favorite things about the campus, to be honest, um, being able to go inside to my classes and being greeted by my name uh, by the professor is, is something very special. And you know, those are two things that I think I would, I would say. Yeah, I can add on to that really quick. Um, for me, um, something that I would tell um, future students would be to use your resources, utilize their resources, because there's so many on campus that honestly, like we covered a lot today and that's not that's only like a handful of them so there's so many resources for us to use and for me I didn't use all of them to the full potential um, when I got here because I felt you know like some type of guilt like I don't want to take the opportunity from someone else that might need them but when I did reach out and when I did utilize the resources um, it, I never had that feeling and it was just like oh I could have been using this this whole time so yeah definitely use your resources. Back to what uh, Susan and Martin were saying, um, there is a lot of resources and um, something that Mar Martin mentioned was that don't be afraid to go to your professor. The professors are there to help you and especially at UC Merced where the classes are, are a lot smaller. Um, they, they call you by your name. I know I have a handful of professors that know my name and I, I feel acknowledged and 
very grateful, grateful for that. And also, yeah, don't be afraid to go to your professor. They're there to help you. They're very quick in responding and they're, they want you to succeed genuinely. Um, and also there's your advisors, your advisors, which within your own department, they're there to help you and navigate you to achieve your goals of your um, degree or your uh, degrees. That, that is great. Um, so one of the questions that uh, came up uh, in the Q and A, uh, since you've attended UC Merced, have you ever felt discriminated at all? Uh, I, to answer that, I would say no. Um, I think, you know, going back to my introduction, I am part of a club that is dominantly Indian and I am Hispanic. Um, and it really just goes to show that the diversity there and just that campus culture, it's very accepting. I've never felt discriminated against. And in that club, I'm the only non-Indian and I've always felt uh, very welcomed. And, you know, the culture here on campus, I think people are, you know, jumping to to want to teach you if, if you're different from them. So in my case, I have no prior knowledge to Indian culture or Punjabi culture or the religion. And, you know, instead of, you know, utilizing that against me, they were really nice and really accommodating and just, you know, excited to show me um, their experiences. And I think that that transpires through all interactions um, that I've had at UC Merced. So I've never felt discriminated against. Anybody want, want to answer that question? Or we're good. Okay. So being a UC, UC Merced student uh, on your downtime, what do you do uh, on your downtime? You know, makes, you know, there's no activities going on or, or there's no classes and, and you have Free time. What do you do with that free time? Because a lot of students will ask, what is there to do around UC Merced? So what do you do to keep yourselves occupied or maybe entertain yourselves in many ways or another? What do you do? Yeah, um, so I'm a, I know like when I first came to UC Merced and I told people they were like, there's nothing around there. But when I came here, I realized like all the things that there were here and I was just like, damn, I wish people could know better. Um, because like some of the things um, that I do now, there are things that I've learned and like discovered here. So um, there's a really like, there's a lake um, really close to the school, which is really nice. It's like walking distance and it's beautiful. You can um, kayak there, you can have a picnic. It's very nice. Um, and also around town, there's different, um, there's really cool boba, boba shops, coffee shops, there's, um, you can go roller skating, there's a lot of things to do, but also um, I found that um, Merced, we have Yosemite really close too, and um, a really cool thing about UC Merced is that they do have a program that um, offers like kind of like field trips or outdoor experiences that take you to Yosemite for the weekend or you know and you can pay like a small fee and they provide transportation and you go with other students like they do trips to Yosemite to Monterey and that adds on to what I was going to say that um, UC Merced is surrounded by so many other amazing places you can visit over the weekend with your friends so there's a lot of things to do here um yeah that is awesome. Think, this question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was sorry. just going to say, I think Merced is in, is perfectly situated. It's in the middle of everywhere. So we have San Francisco two hours away. And then we have right next door, we have Yosemite National Park, which is one of the most beautiful parks, in my opinion. I may be biased, but um, it's one of the most beautiful national parks um, in the United States. And also it's uh, around UC Merced. It's a great place to bike. I always see a lot of people biking around campus. And um, yeah, there's a lot to do. And then we also have our um, our gym on campus. I like to take use of that. And it's a we actually it's a two different places. We also have basketball courts and tennis courts. There's a lot to do on campus. And um, yeah, there's there's a lot of different options. That is awesome. This question goes out to uh, Alex. Alex, um, what housing and financial resources are available to our first generation students? But housing options are available. Well, the yeah. housing application already came uh, opened up in mid-March. And so students can see a variety of different living and learning communities. Some of them emphasize academics, such as engineering, such as also community service. Our Fiat Lux program, for those who've been invited into that program, is also an LLC. The Afro Hall community is also available. So if 
students are not interested in any of those living learning communities, there's the traditional residence halls in which they can live in. There's rooms, uh, actually we're increasing some of the rooms, so they can opt for a double, a triple, or a quad. The more people, the less expensive the room is. Also, financial aid does help out with the cost of, of living on campus as well. And as long as a student indicated on their FAFSA or their California Dream Act that they were going to live on campus, then financial aid calculates and estimates the expenses and so forth. This should already or will soon, either they have or, or will soon have access to their financial aid award through their student portal or have received a formal letter of the aid that they're going to receive through the US mail as well. So that's available to them. Hopefully that answers the question. Thank you very much, Alex. And I wanna thank all the panels for the great answers and great questions that we received tonight. Now, please, I just wanna remind you that May 1st is around the corner for all incoming freshmen. And for transfer students, the SIR date is June 1st, 2022. So please be mindful of that and keep that in your calendar or even earlier if you possibly can uh, to be part of the Bobcat family. And again, just a, a reminder to all of you, we're gonna be having a, 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 a Bobcat series uh, on uh, Saturday, April 23rd, uh, open house for a lot of you who want to come over to our campus and, and see our beautiful campus and get to experience what UC Merced can actually feel like and what it looks like and feel the, the great people that uh, work here at UC Merced along with the students who attend UC Merced. And for those of you uh, in, in different regions, parts of the, uh, of the state, uh, we encourage you to actually come out and, and see us for our admit uh, receptions that we're having, we're hosting starting this weekend in Sacramento this Friday, April 1st, Santa Clara, uh, April 2nd, and then down in South in LA, down in Southern California, Los Angeles, Sunday, April 3rd. Please do make your reservations and, and we hope to see you there. We wanna make sure that you speak to us uh, to see, uh, to talk to a lot of the folks that work at UC Merced, the staff members. Some of us will be there to host you and, and, and hopefully congratulate you in person and hope to see you there. So those are the things that are happening uh, of that. Also, keep in mind also there's other upcoming Bobcat events. Uh, April 5th, you're gonna have the Guardian Scholars Program. April 7th, you see Merced Documented AV Community. Social Justice and Identity for April 20th. April 26th, Discover Housing, Transportation and Dining. And April 28th, UC Merced's Office of Student Involvement. So you see there's a lot of stuff that's going on and we want you to make sure that you keep track of these so that you get yourself involved in these activities. And we welcome all of you to come and join us again in the future of our and we welcome you once again congratulations for being admitted to our campus we also encourage you for you to take tours on our campus be either a guided tour or self-guided tour or interactive tours but just make your reservations through the tours at ucmerced.edu okay next slide please we want to thank you very much all of you once again congratulations for being admitted to our uc merced should you have any questions in regards to uh anything that deals with the admissions process please contact our office and we're here to help you and, and, and help you with the process of admissions. Keep in mind, just because you got admitted doesn't mean that the admissions process ends there. It's, there's a lot of things that have to be done on your end, and we have to verify that information. So make sure that if you have any questions at any given time, please contact our office uh, so that you'll be able to get your answers, hopefully answered as soon as possible. We want to thank every single one of you. We want to thank our panelists. We want to thank the, the staff, Claudia Torres, for doing such a marvelous, wonderful job. Alex Delgadillo for doing a great job. And of course, Juan Villegas for giving us a little piece of, of information from him. And once again, we wanna thank you very much and we wish you the best of luck. And we hope to, that you become a Bobcat for fall of 22. Thank you very much. And we'll see you on the road or we'll see you on April 23rd. Thank you and have a good night.